What's up guys, boy Uz back in once again, and we got some more Marvel news. Now we're gonna get right into it because this is pretty important and it also kind of ties into something that I saw, thought it could be real. What I, I had a, you know, I, a, another side of me just knew that it was probably fake, right? It was a post, a quote from Kevin Feige, but it turns out that it wasn't. But let's go over one thing after another. But this does relate to Spider-Man no Way Home. So Spider-Man's Kirsten Dunst and Daredevil's Deborah Ann Wall spotted at LA Studio amidst MCU reshoots. Now let me tell you guys this right now. Before I even read this article to y'all, I just want to say that the biggest thing here you would think is the original MJ, right? Absolutely not. Because the fact that they got Deborah Ann Wall who was in the Netflix Daredevil. Listen, one of the things that I've been saying since the second Spider-Man film, okay, Far From Home, was that because of this new trouble that our boy Peter, a.k.a. Tom Holland, is now in, you know, based on how he his whole identity got revealed and put out there, they're trying to soil his name and all this and that and the third, I said, it sounds like he's going to need a lawyer. And I said, a great lawyer would have been Daredevil, right? And, and, and no one has any kind of inclination if, you know, any of those Daredevil characters or Daredevil himself, right, from the Netflix show are going to play a part in any of the MCU at all at any point in time. It looks like we got our answer just based on her being in the movie. Potentially, right? So let's go ahead and check out what they have to say. So anticipating for Spider-Man No Way Home currently sits at an all-time high despite the fact Sony and Marvel have yet to release a trailer for the Tom Holland-led sequel. Aside from a few casting announcements, the, um, the amount of official information regarding Spider-Man's next adventure is extremely minimal and it's honestly for a, a bunch of obvious reasons, okay? For the most part, months of rumors and speculation have driven anticipation for the sequel close to the level of 2019's Avengers Endgame, which I'm not even gonna lie, like I've been also saying, is so true because when you think about it, this is the next biggest film that we're seeing so soon right after Endgame. Endgame was like a blockbuster hit. No, there's no spec, there's no like argument about that. And with how this Spider-Man film is gearing itself up to be, it might be the next big hit. And that's only two years after the fact. We're in 2021 right now. So, I mean, let's keep let's keep seeing what they're saying here. Tom Holland will reprise with Peter Parker, while Jacob Batalon and Zendaya will return as classmates uh, Ned Leeds and MJ respectfully, obviously. Uh, meanwhile, Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange will join Spider-Man in a mentoring role to assist him with a slew of villains from across the multiverse. And if you weren't already aware, if you didn't already see some of those toys that they... Uh, revealed, which I also did cover here on this channel, that uh, if you look at the What If trailer, you can actually, well, not even the trailer, but if you look at the preview or uh, like the, the image, the key image, you can see that Spider-Man in the corner, literally with Doctor Strange, like a Doctor Strange like cape looking like. So it seems like that was our, our first tease into what we might end up seeing in this live action film, right? So, Alfred Molina, oh wait, hold on, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. Alfred Molina will be returning via the multiverse from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 as his robot-armed villain, Doc Ock. So that was already confirmed, right? However, the scale of this film doesn't stop there as Jamie Foxx's Electro, Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, and other villains will reportedly hop across timelines to antagonize Holland's Avenger with a multiversal Sinister Six, which is the most fire thing you can even imagine, which I've also been saying, because honestly, that is exactly what it seems like is going to happen. Fortunately, it seems as if the MCU Spider-Man will have plenty of help as Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are both heavily rumored to don their Spidey suits once again. The historic webheads will reportedly be joined by their respective love interests, Kirsten Dunst, Mary Jane, and Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy. Funny thing is, Gwen Stacy's dead, right? She broke her neck, right? Like, like she got me. Her death got memed on so, so much. Like, they got hella break her neck playlists and whatnot. I, I, which I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I, I found very funny. But 
if that's to be true, then right off the bat, you can already tell that whenever Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man Spider -Man stuff gets intertwined, then I guess it's safe to assume and believe that all of those characters are going to be intertwined at a previous point before that event happened right like th does that not make sense but anyway surprisingly the rumors don't stop there as charlie cox is reportedly reprising his role as matt murdoch aka daredevil from his canceled netflix series the critically acclaimed series featured cox's blind lawyer engaging heroic antics by night while running a small legal firm by day alongside love interest karen page and close friend foggy nelson listen the fact that they canceled those shows was a huge mistake, right? But the fact that the rumors of this now happening and now with the apparent spotting of other actors from that canceled series uh, in the, you know, the filming process for this film all but confirms it in my book. And, 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 I'm, and I'm, I'm happy to even be talking about this and to be sharing this with you guys because this is literally like the perfect setup that I've that I've only imagined and this is the best the best kind of you know way to I guess reintroduce these characters is through the means uh, of a Spider-Man film a huge Spider-Man film as No Way Home reshoots get underway recent images captured in LA have shown Karen Page actress Deborah Ann Wall with Kirsten Dunst leading to speculation the, the Marvel love interests are involved in the filming so as Spider-Man No Way Home uh, reshoots reportedly take place in L.A. Kirsten Dunst, who played Mary Jane Watson in Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man trilogy, has been spotted with Daredevil's Karen actress Deborah Ann Wall. Images captured on July 30th by Celebrities Pictures posted on Twitter by Dunst Updates showcase the Marvel stars together at Hollywood Sunset Gower Studios. So let's take a closer look at these images here. Wow, look at that. Dude, that's definitely them. I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen Kirsten Dunst probably since those Spider-Man films. So that's crazy. This is amazing. So interestingly enough, the Amazing Spider-Man star Andrew Garfield is reportedly also in LA at the moment, according to Twitter user Drifty Film. While reshoots were previously believed to be underway in Atlanta, some reports have suggested the production has moved to Los Angeles. This is further supported by the recent sighting of Tom Holland in L.A. at the Suicide Squad premiere uh, in, in images as shared by Twitter Drifty Film. So shout out to this dude Drifty, okay, because they're doing the Lord's work right now, just putting out these freaking images of these spotted, like, like their spottings of all these actors and stuff. Like, this is great. British star usually resides in London when he's not in front of the camera and his only other currently announced project, Uncharted, wrapped filming months ago. I almost forgot about that. Tom Holland literally being uh, in, in, featured in Uncharted. That's crazy. That's a game I actually have to still play. Similarly, neither Wall, Garfield, nor Dunst currently have any projects in production, indicating they may be involved with the ongoing reshoots for the Spider-Man sequel. That's freaking amazing wow there's so much more holy crap okay so let's check this out so what's going on in no way homes reshoots oh, that's a great question so matt murdoch actor charlie cox was recently forced to cancel a texas convention appearance on august 6 2021 due to scheduling conflicts mm. curiously that date lands just a week after these images of his daredevil co-star were captured in la based on this all signs currently seem to daredevil playing a key role within the reshoot listen i mean i feel like the stars just keep aligning like perfectly like the fact like normally when when con appearances get canceled it is always usually for a really good reason it's like they get injured they're sick there's a pandemic going on or it's something like this that is super crucial that i would you know of course be totally okay with i mean i'm sure every everybody should be okay like if, if you if you come to later find out that the reason why their appearance was canceled was because they're about to be included in i don't know the freaking next spider-man film like come on like that's 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 kind of fire right and it's totally forgivable it's been some time since rumblings of kirsten dunce's marvel return were last heard and the extent of her role in the film is as unclear as ever 
With Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man Returns still unconfirmed, it's hard to determine exactly when in the timeline of his franchise No Way Home could take place. Previous comments from Alfred Molina suggested his robot-armed villain would be de-aged for his return to closely resemble his Spider-Man 2 look. If Molina is telling the truth, then it's possible that cl the classic couple will be similarly de-aged to place the entire adventure between the second and third installments in Maguire's trilogy. Which, that's actually pretty interesting because now we're at a stage in life where we have that technology to de-age people in movies. Like, that's that's kind of crazy. And I'd, I'd imagine that same uh, technique will be used on any other characters that might have, I don't know, of course, aged in the last 20 years. Because if you think about it, they're probably going to, no offense to Willem Dafoe, but they're probably going to have to hit touch up his, you know, his whole thing uh, if, if he's coming back as the Green Goblin. Assuming Tom Holland, Charlie Cox, Andrew Garfield, Deborah Ann Wall, and, Chris, and Kirsten Dunst are all involved in these reshoots, then it seems as if the additional photography for the sequel will be rather extensive. With almost the entire cast of No Way Home protagonists seemingly returning for further filming, it's entirely possible Tobey Maguire may also be back in LA to film extra scenes for the holiday blockbuster. The exact reasons for the star-studded reshoots are currently unclear. Sometimes the editing process leads to the director seeking changes to certain scenes or looking to add new ones altogether. Alternatively, it's possible that some sequences may rely on much of the cast being on set at once, meaning the majority of them had to return when everybody was available. While McGuire's Peter Parker looks likely to return with his classic love interest, Andrew Garfield's Spidey may sadly not receive the same treatment. Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy was killed in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and the actress herself recently gave birth, potentially hindering her from joining the production. So yeah, so kind of like what I was alluding to before, I'm like, her, her character kind of died. So I mean, even if, like, I mean, you know, now with this whole multiverse, I guess it really doesn't matter if you have characters that were seen dead on screen at other points in time, when at any point in time, they could also they could just be brought back it, you know, as long as they are taken from a certain point in time in our current timeline, right? As fans actually await the first trailer for No Way Home, little tidbits of news such as these out ought to help many power through patiently until that glorious day comes. Spider-Man No Way Home hits theaters on December 17th, 2021. Oh my God, that is such a long time. Now, really quick before I give you guys my full thoughts on this, I also wanted to bring up another very important point that when I actually shared this on my own personal Twitter, I, like I said, already kind of, uh, I, I mentioned this very briefly in the, in the intro but in the start of this video, and I said that I'm pretty sure this is fake, and it definitely is because if you actually zoom in, on the image itself, which I will show you guys right now, it literally says Kevin Feige didn't say that. But I still want to share it with you guys because I feel like it's a de it's it's definitely an important and interesting topic to bring up. And it is just like this. Let me read this first. It says there will be no trailer. All right? We know fans are eagerly waiting for even a glimpse of No Way Home, but for the first time, we are at taking a risk. By not releasing the trailer, we want the audience to experience everything at the cinemas. And of course, like it says, as you see in very transparent font, Kevin Feige didn't say that. Now, here's the thing. I want to leave this image up so that you guys can literally see the, 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 the text. There will be no trailer. I'm not going to lie. As someone who is eagerly anticipating any official reveals, releases, from Marvel, from Marvel Studios, from Kevin Feige, from anyone that has been involved within these projects, I can tell you this right now. For the first time, I can tell you publicly that if this was real, I would be 150,000 trillion billion zillion percent okay with that. Because I, I, I kind of miss the days when you didn't know everything at first. Do you know what I'm saying? I really wish that that element of surprise was still a thing in modern day, you know, film, video games, everything. It seems like everybody is too 
up reviews and they, they, they it's like they want to make sure that whatever they're investing their money in is worth it, right? And I guess to a degree, that makes sense. And it's not a terrible mindset to have. But I mean, with how they do trailers nowadays, it's almost as if like they kind of just spoil the, the whole movie within the trailers, you know, in most cases. Because when you go watch the movie and then you watch a trailer afterwards, you then realize like, wow, like they really just showed like, the whole big climactic sequence, the fight, all that kind of stuff. And like, you know, I'm sure some fans even go as far as basically predicting how the entire movie is going to be laid out just based on how the trailer is. So I bring this up, even though this is a fake post, I do hope that, I mean, by some miracle, and I know it sounds weird for me to say that, but by some miracle, I really do hope that they don't show us a trailer. Because December 17th, right, at the time of this video, this is, we're in August right now and i feel like with everything else that's going on we have what if coming out we have all the all these other shows and you know other movies releasing between now and then spider-man no way home is the biggest anticipated film just based on all the rumors itself and i can tell you right now again i would totally be okay with them not releasing a single trailer and yes it would probably of course be a huge risk they may lose out on potential money, but, but I feel like them not wanting to show a trailer could even be the biggest hint that all of these rumors end up being true because just like with anything else, and I want to use a wrestling analogy right now, and not really an analogy, but I guess in a more of an example is that they don't have like some, most cases they don't really have trailers or like oh, this person is about to make their debut here on WWE or AEW or something like that. But it, what the best types of surprise reveals is when it just happens, and it happens live. You're either watching it on TV or you're watching it in the arena in person. And the, the feeling you get, the excitement you get when you had no idea, even if there was rumors and speculation going into it, you had no official inclination. And that is what I'm trying to get at. And I know this 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 is probably you know me just rambling at this point, but I really think that that kind of a practice should be you know had a little more in the modern day. Because again, we just we I feel like as fans we just know a little bit too much going into anything nowadays. It's like you know a lot of people are I feel like they've grown spoiled where they expect a lot. They expect all the trailers, all of the news coverage, interviews, all before whatever it is to come out. And I feel like that's not right. I, I really think that we should start to readapt to how things used to be. So that way, when we do go into seeing these films and we do go into playing these games, that we all get to experience it in the most hypest and excited way possible. Because listen, I know that I'm sure it would be great to react to, to a trailer, but I will take that loss for the sake of me going to a movie theater with whoever I'm going to go with. And I have no idea what's about to happen. Right. And all I have is just my predictions in my mind. And the next thing I see is all of this stuff happening in front of me. It will, it will be such a great feeling and, and, and it will be so worth it in the end. And I, like I said, I just hope that really does happen.